two things. One, it's symbolically important. It's the first, it's the third official state visit to any Indian leader. It is also going to be the third state visit that the Biden administration is offering any leader after the Japanese and the South Korean leaders. Biden, because the Biden administration has placed a strategic bet on India, that India's rise is good for American national interest. As of now, only superpower in the world uh, values the relationship with India matters a lot. Three places it will be watched, uh, Beijing will be watching it. Second uh, capital watching will be Moscow. Third, I would say the capitals in the region will be watching, whether it's Islamabad or Dhaka or Kathmandu. Three things. One, it's symbolically important. It's the first, it's the third official state visit to any Indian leader in 76 years. Um, it is also going to be the third state visit that the Biden administration is offering any leader after the Japanese and the South Korean leaders. Uh, so symbolically, it's important for President Biden because the Biden administration has placed a strategic bet on India, that India's rise is good for American national interest. It's important for Prime Minister Modi to show that, uh, you know, that he has received an official state visit um, and that he, he will be meeting President Biden about three times this year, I believe. It's Hiroshima, it's DC, and then Delhi for the G20. And so uh, for an Indian leader to show that the, lead, the president of the... I, I, as of now, only superpower in the world uh, values the relationship with India matters a lot. S substantively, it's important because the India-US economic relationship has grown to about 190 billion. They would like to take it to 500 billion. Uh, the defense partnership has grown with a defense industrial roadmap and India's purchase of the Predator drones, 30, as well as the GE jet engine deal. Um, and the third is the very strong people-to-people -people relationship. Uh, the the people sort of, you know, the diaspora which is in this city right now, which you can see in New York, um, and which is going to be there on Wednesday to welcome uh, everybody in the South Lawn or on Friday. So it shows the strength of the India-US, uh, you know, the people-to-people -people dimension, which has normally been uh, the strongest element of this partnership for seven and a half decades. Ma'am, how do you think that this uh, visit is keenly going to be watched by the global powers around the world? So I'd say uh, three places it will be watched. Uh, Beijing will be watching it uh, because China has always been concerned that the closer India gets to the United States, the move, more it moves away from non-alignment. Um, and it's concerned that if that the closer India gets to the United States, it's going to get not just economic investment and technology, but it's going to get defense equipment, like the Predator drones, which, for example, India is using vis-a-vis -vis China on the LAC um, and can use in the maritime area. Um, you know, sort of second uh, capital watching will be Moscow. Uh, because traditionally, uh, India's largest supplier of defense equipment has been Russia. Uh, but American equipment is high-end and high technology and so Russia will be concerned that the more India purchases American equipment, the less likely it will be to in the future purchase Russian equipment. Um, and third, I would say the capitals in the region will be watching, whether it's Islamabad or Dhaka or Kathmandu, uh, uh, Colombo, uh, you know, so because from their point of view, uh, the closer India gets to the United States, it has an impact on their relationship with the U.S. Um, and also their desire to sometimes play the United States or China vis-a-vis -vis India. Ma'am, uh, as we talk, Secretary Blinken is in China. Yes. And we know how China has been aggressive in the Indo-Pacific. How do you think that India and U.S. can, you know, come together to counter the dragon? So, um, India and the U.S. are working in the Indo-Pacific, whether it's uh, the Indo-Pacific Strategy, Indo-Pacific Economic Forum, uh, Quad, um, you know, even the other Quad on the opposite side, the Middle Eastern Quad. Uh, but the problem sort of is going to be that India does not want, India has a problem on its land border and in the Indian Ocean with China. India does not want to confront China or provoke China into a conflict. So while India gets closer to the United States and is willing to work with the U.S. Uh, to build an Indo-Pacific security architecture, India is wary of pushing China too far. So India would prefer to build its own capabilities, economic, technic technological and military, so that 
it can send a message to China that we are strong enough and sort of, you know, ensure, deter China from trying to take over more Indian territory or, you know, walk into parts of India, whether it be Ladakh or Anachal.